Hello there, welcome to Glory TV on this great and amazing day. Living in a changing world, with their changing people, with their changing times, with the constantly changing culture, I am presenting the indescribable and changeable Christ. In my world, the supernatural is natural and nothing is impossible if you believe. In my world, you're going to have to be very careful what you think because thoughts become things. I'm Conrad Santa, and my talking point today is giving, giving. Now, this, the emphasis of the concept for today is uh, unveiling the source of our motivation for giving to our skill, our obedience to God, to develop and to grow in strength in serving God. So what are the learnings outcome? You may ask me. Well, the learning outcomes are things I trust you will learn from this media presentation today. At the conclusion, you should be capable to articulate and understand the biblical base of giving, or biblical base of giving, and secondly, that you may develop an active approach with uh, a right motives for giving. And thirdly, is that you can be capable to exercise and practice in real setting despite your circumstances, whether you have enough or you don't have enough, but you will be able to exercise through God's power to know where you can give. It doesn't really matter your circumstances. And number four, that you can identify the potential pressures or patterns that can lead you into wrong way of giving. And finally, that you'll be, uh, you'll be able to adopt the biblical motivation for giving. And so let's get started here. In the book of Matthew chapter 6 verse 1, there Jesus was talking on the Sermon on the Mount. There the Word of God says that, Take heed that you do not your alms before men to be seen of them. Otherwise, you have no reward of your Father in heaven. Now I'd like you to look at the word take heed, the word heed. What does that mean to heed? To heed, uh, it's a Greek word which means prosiko. What that means, it means to hold the mind or to pay attention, to pay strict attention and to apply oneself to something, to apply oneself to something. So Jesus was saying take heed. So he was saying, take hold of your mind, pay strict attention, and apply yourself to giving, not so that you'll be seen by men, but you give because you love God. So why was he talking about it? Why did he use that? He says, take heed. Well, because as human beings, we have uh, we have this natural propensity, whether you're saved or unsaved, we have the natural propensity to please and wanting to be accepted by the things that we do. We do certain things in order to be accepted or in order to get favor, in order to be liked by people. So Jesus was saying here, you gotta correct your motives when you're giving. So how should we give then? You know, we give because we love God. So why did he talk a lot about the mind there? Why did he say that word there? Because he says, take heart of the mind. Now listen to this. Because the mind is an element of a person that enables them to be aware of the world around him and to experience things around him, to think and to feel. It is the faculty of consciousness and of thought that has to come into alignment with God, with the will of God. Once we take our mind, aligning our mind according to what the Word of God speaks in the book of Romans there, chapter 12, 
if we renew our mind and our minds are being guarded and are being governed by the Word of God, we bring our minds in there, even our thinking, our motivations are going to be changing. They're going to be godly motivation will be motivated out of the love of God and out of the Spirit of God to do whatever we are doing. So you don't give in order to be seen by men. You don't give because you're doing it to be seen by men or to kind of make a public spectacle of it. No, you give because God commands you to give. You give out of obedience. You give out of obedience to God's law. You give because you love God. You give because you're obeying what God is saying in His Word. In the book of Luke, the sixth chapter, the 38th verse, the Word of God there says, Give and it shall be given unto you. Good measure, pressed down, shaken together, and running over, shall men put in your bosom. For the, me the same measure you give is the same measure that shall be returned to you. Now, if you look at that verse there, this portion of Scripture, it's specifically telling us, it's a command that God says, give, give. It's God has commanded us to give. When we give, we are obeying God. If you go to the book of Deuteronomy chapter 28 there, starting from this one, it says, if you you be uh, obey God by diligently seeking to obey, to follow God. So if you are obeying God with the diligently, carefully, with the careful consideration in doing everything that God has, has asked you to, like here in the book of Luke, it will be a blessing to you and you'll be blessed too as you obey God's word. There's a blessing that comes out of your obedience to God. Now, because the word of God there says that give and it shall be given unto you. Now, over the years, I've come across many brothers and sisters. I remember in one time in particular, one of the brothers had two acoustic guitars way back home in Zambia. And I like music and I needed a guitar, so he had two. And I said, can you give me one? He says, no, 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 brother, I can't give you one because I need to seek the first of God to see if God wants me to give you this guitar. Right now, I can't give it to you because I need to pray. Give me time to go and pray and ask God if I could give. But what does the Bible say in the book of Luke? The book of Luke says that give and it shall be given unto you. God has already commanded us to give. You don't have to go back to God and say, God, shall I give or shall I not? You don't have to inquire. You don't have to put God in an inquisition or a period or a prolonged time of intense questioning and investigating to God whether you should give or not. The question that you should have is your inquiry should be, Lord, I have these resources. Where do I take it? Do I give it to there or over here? Do I give it to this one or to that one? You pray, you ask God to ask specifically who is in need of what you have. God's going to direct you. You don't go to God and ask him, God, shall I give or shall I not give? Because the word of God says, give already there. The word of God again says that if you have two coats or two jackets, one needs one. You don't have to ask God, God, shall I give it to him here? And God has to know some things we don't even have to pray. We know if it's in your power to do good, do it. Because it's a sin for somebody who knows to do right and they're not doing it right. That's a sin. So you don't have to pray. Just give it to him because that's what the word of God says. I remember many years ago in Zambia, there was a meeting. In one of the churches, I was asked to go there as a guest speaker. So I went and I preached. And after preaching, then I made an altar call and people came standing in front there. They were standing like this. So I said to myself, OK, I'll start praying for these people. I like to worship. So I started to sing a, a worship chorus. And soon after I finished singing that worship chorus, I started to pray for people. There was one young man standing on my right hand. I looked at him, I asked him, I says, excuse me, is there anything specifically that you want me to pray for? The young man said, yes, sir. Yes, sir, please. I said, what should I pray for? He says, pray for me, I need shoes. When he said shoes, I looked down his feet. He was barefooted standing there. And then something happened. I, as I looked at him, I looked at his shoe, his, his foot is as big as my foot. 
And then I put my hands on him. I started to pray, God, in the name of Jesus, Lord, I pray. And the Lord rebuked me. I started to speak in tongues. Oh, shandala, God says, don't shandala, shanda, oh, shanda, shanda. Just stop and give him a shoe. You know, it's the same size he had. Now, some things, people, we don't need to pray about them. It's straightforward that you can give because the word of God commands us to give. You know what I did? Instead of praying, I stopped. I said, wait a minute, brother, I took my shoes, the very shoes that I had on, and I gave it to him. And he went and sat down. What did I do there? I simply obey what the word of God says. Now, no, don't be too religious and say, no, I need to pray to see if I should give or not. The word, the word of God has said already give. It's the same like prayer. If you look at Jesus when he was talking about prayer, he says, uh, when you pray, when you fast, so, oh, I have to think if I need to pray or not. Well, it's already a command. You don't have to go back and ask whether you should pray or not. You don't have to go to God and ask whether you should fast or not fast. It's a command. It's in the Word of God. You don't have to say, should I give or should I not give? Because it's already in the Word of God there. It's like somebody brings food before on your table, on the table before you. And you're hungry. You, you, you need to eat. And you're saying, God, is it your will that I should eat this food? Well, you're hungry. What do you do? You bless the food and you eat the food. So people of God, don't don't be too religious to say to try and spiritualize this. Whatever is written in the word of God, it's already there. Take that word and apply it to your life. Then God's blessing will come upon your life. Now, in the book of 2 Corinthians, uh, the ninth chapter, the sixth verse to the eighth verse, the word of God says, each of you, each of you should give what you have decided in your heart to give, not reluctantly or sparingly, not because you're compelled to give. For God loves the cheerful giver, and God is able to bless you abundantly so that in all things, or in all things at all times, having that your needs are met, and you will be, uh, you are bound in every good work. All right, so you don't give reluctantly. What does that mean? Or giving with uh, sparingly. Let's look at a little bit about that. What does it mean to give sparingly? You as a child of God, you don't give sparingly. It means you're giving with restrictions or, or in an infrequent way, in small quantities here or over there. It's a scanty kind of way of giving, you know, with insufficient quality. You know, it's you're holding on to everything a little bit there, but you know that you can give. For example, if I was in need or somebody was in need of 200 or $200, and you have the $200, in fact, you have $400, and somebody's in need, but instead of you giving the whole amount that they need, you take a little 50 over there, maybe you give them a 20. Come on, don't give sparingly. Don't give sparingly with this scanty like being frugal to try and keep everything. The Word of God says, naked we come in this world and naked we shall go. By the way, the only thing you take out of this world, people of God, is the love you have. You would take nothing, you came with nothing, and nothing you shall go with nothing. Naked we came and naked we go. So remember, don't give sparingly. Give because you love God. Give because you're obeying the Word of God. Now, do not give because you're compelled. I've been to places where people compare. I remember I was talking to one of the ladies. He says, you know, you people who go to church, you have a certain way of compelling people to give. You sing certain songs, and when the songs really touch you, that's the time when you ask for people to give. And then they force you. They force you to give. They force you. you don't, you're not supposed to force anybody to give. Don't force, don't give because you're being forced to. So when we talk about giving out of compulsion, that means it has been forced on you, you're obliged to, or these, uh, somebody's constraining you, or somebody's trying to exert an external pressure on you, so it becomes irresistible, so then you feel that you have to give. Now, if you give because you are forced, what happens to you there, people of God, it leads you into sin. And how does that happen? Because you are forced to give. Number one, what's going to happen? You're going to be bitter because you're forced to give. And bitterness will breed resentment. 
Resentment will lead, will lead to hatred. Hatred will lead to unforgiveness. Unforgiveness will lead to violence. Violence will lead to temper. Temper will lead to anger. Anger will lead to retaliation. Retaliation will lead to murder. Why? Because you are forced to do something. So you don't force people to give. If you force people to give, they become bitter. Or anybody, you become bitter, you, you become bitter. You begin to resent the person that you give. You gave because you were forced to give. I remember many years ago, my cousin had given me a pair of pants. And uh, I washed them because we never had an inside uh, toilet. Our, our, our washroom was outside, was some, uh, an out, outhouse somewhere in the back of the house, so I put it on the line there. So now I went, when I was going down there, I saw him holding on to the pants that he gave me, looking at them. I'm like, wait a minute, didn't you just give me these pants? You gave me the pants and now you were, oh, do you really want them or were you really giving me? He was like, yeah, these pants, I'm like, take them back. Why? Because he was giving with resentment inside him. And he was giving, he wasn't really happy about it. He started to resent me because of what he did. So many don't give because you are forced. If people give because they are forced, they become bitter. They resent whoever they gave the gift to. This is why sometimes people resent us as ministers of the gospel. People resent even to go to church because when they go there, they feel like they are forced to give. You're not supposed to give out of being forced or being compelled. You give because you love God. And uh, many people are bound because of that. So please give because you love God. And don't give because you want to get favor. You don't give because you want to get favor. And uh, I'll try and say something on this one. People give because they want to get favor. You know what I call that? That's not giving. It's simply a bribe. What is a bribe? A bribe is a sum of money or something valuable that you take and you give a person and in order to persuade them to do something. Okay, so you're giving somebody because you want them to have, you want to have favor with them. Or it's not only maybe giving um, money or anything or in terms of doing things. You do certain things because you want a favor from somebody. You are doing anything you do, you're doing it because you want something like a favor in return. So you are not doing it out of your heart. What that is, is some kind of a, a bribe that you're doing because you want something back. But you do it because it's as unto the Lord, because God commands us to give. God commands us to do out of love because we love God. And out of our obedience to God, then we do whatever we're supposed to do. The Word of God declares in the book of Ecclesiastes, the seventh chapter, the seventh verse, it says, Surely oppression maketh a man mad and a gift destroyeth a man and many people have destroyed others with gifts because they were doing it because they wanted the person to try and do something for them especially ministers today you're gonna have to be very careful i remember many years ago in one of the churches that i pastored there was one lady who was giving a lot of money and she says you know you better change your, your, the way we sing songs because uh, otherwise I'll leave and we'll see where this church is going to go because once I go, you know, we'll see because you see the people who tithe a lot in this church, if we go, you'll be stuck. I said, you know what? You're not going to do this because I'm not going to do it because you are saying so because you give. Are you giving it to me or are you giving it to God? So sometimes we have these different kind of uh, notions that are off the wall because we are doing it. We are doing it not for God. We are doing it with uh, our own motivations. So we need to have right intentions when we're doing things for God. Now, don't give again because someone will give back to you in the future. Especially around Christmas time, I've seen this happen a lot. People give to certain people because if I give you this year, I give you a Christmas card or I buy you a big present and I know next year you're gonna do something better for me. So people do that. And if you don't give anybody, then they'll never give to you because they know that they're not gonna receive anything from you anywhere, so why do it? So if you are giving to someone because you're expecting them to give back to you, you know what that is called? It's called an investment. It's not really giving. What is an investment? An investment is the act of allocating resources, usually money, 
or something with an expectation of generating more or a profit down the road. So that's how people do today. So don't give because somebody's going to give to you. In fact, you're more blessed to give to even somebody who's not going to give back to you. Why? Because the Word of God says in the book of Proverbs, uh, chapter 19, the 17th verse, it says, He that hath pity, okay, for the poor, upon the poor, lendeth to God. Or he who gives to the poor, lendeth to God. And you know what happens when you lend to God? He's the creator. He owns everything. And God will bless you when you do that because you're lending to the poor. I remember when I was in Zambia, we had gone to downtown in Kabwe and we saw a woman sitting down. She had a baby, I think it was around, I can't remember the, 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 the month though, but it was pretty hot. And she's sitting out, she had the little about cucumbers sitting with the baby under the sun, the sun, it's burning there, it's pretty hot. You could literally see in her eyes when we looked at her that she's really, really going through terrible times, just wanting to sell that so she can get something or get some food for her, her child. And so I came then I asked, I said, how much is all this stuff that you're selling? So she said, oh, this is, she, she said the amount. And then I looked at her and I asked, what about everything here, how much it is? And she said it, it, was, it wasn't even much, it was about only, only $50. So I said to her, okay, you know what? My wife and I, we took the money, we gave it to us, just take your stuff and go home. She was so astounded, she couldn't believe. She looked at me, are you really sure? I said, yeah, look, you've been here in the sun for too long. Take that and go home. When you do that, you bless God's people. You know what happened to that lady? Do you know what? She, she felt blessed and when she, wherever she was going, did I say, oh no, she doesn't go to church, she's not a Christian, so I can't give her like a lot of us who are so religious. No, you have to give to only the one who goes to church. You can't give that person because he doesn't come to our church. You don't give because somebody goes to your church or not. You pray, you ask God and God is going to direct you to certain people who are in need. Sometimes if somebody is in need and they've been praying, and you're disobeying God. Just obey God and do it out of God. And God bless that lady. She went home. And you know how much we thought? We felt so great for what we had done there. The Bible declares in the book of Colossians chapter 3 and the 23rd verse to the 24th verse of the word of God says, Whatsoever you do, do as unto the Lord. Whatsoever you do, do as unto the Lord. Don't do as unto men. When we do as unto men, then we have certain conditions that we put on because we are doing it for men. But if you do it with all your heart as unto the Lord, you give, you're doing it for God, not for man. You give not to get favor. You give not just because you want to be seen by men. You're doing it because it's a command from the Lord. You're doing it because you love God. What a blessing that you have as you do that. So God, the Word of God says, God loves a cheerful giver. So how, how should I give? I should give from a cheerful heart. I should give with a willing heart. I should give because I love God. I should give out of obedience to God. And I don't give because of all these other intentions. And remember, God's going to judge us by our intentions. They, our intentions will be judged by that. For example, I'll try and give you an example and then we'll be ending up this uh, uh, session today. For example, if there was a woman in the church who was a single woman, and I came in the church there and I said, you know what, I'm going to buy a car for that woman there. Every one of you here today, I put it on television and I put it there. Everybody will be like, wow, that man is a good man. Did you see what he did? He bought a car for that single woman. But what you don't know is I'm buying that because our vivo intention, she's my second banana. <laughs> you don't know that. So I'm doing that. You're thinking, oh, I'm a man of God. You're thinking that I have right intentions, but I have wrong intentions. So to you, you'd say, oh, he's a wonderful person. When I come before God, God is gonna, God's going to say to me, you wicked man, you. Why? Because God is looking upon my intents of my heart, the intentions that I have. Do have right intentions? 
Some, sometimes we do acts. Acts might look good in the eyes of people, but God looks at the motive. What is the intent? What's the motive behind that? Even when you give, what is your motive? Do you give in order to be seen by men? Do you give in order to get favor? Do you give in order to be liked by people? No, you give because God loves the cheerful giver. You give because you have a willing heart to do what God requires you to do. And you give out of love for God. You give out of obedience to God. And when you do that, God's going to bless you. Now, listen to this. Do you know that the principle of giving works for everybody, whether you're a Christian or not, whether you're a non-believer or a believer, it works for everybody the same way. If a non-believer gives, he will be blessed too. He'll be, because if you give, the Word of God says, give and it shall be given and to you, a good measure pressed down, shaken together, running over shall men put in your bosom. So if you give, and God's going to give you. So you don't even need to pray for something and say, Oh Lord, I'm praying, should I give, should I not, should I give, should I not? No, the question should be, where do I give? Who do I give? Because you're already commanded to give. May God bless you. Talk to you next time right here on Glory TV again. Thank you so much for watching Glory TV. You stay blessed now.